Hey everyone, this is Manly Badass Hero, and welcome back to Sucker for Love, First Date. Previously, we dated Kafulu, and now we're off to date the other two Lovecraftian girls. So we can't do this one until we find the two other secrets. Um, so basically this is the last route. We're now going to do the King in Yellow. In a world terrorized by slavering shadows and tentacled nightmares, something as innocuous as an additional star in the night sky may be the most prophetic premonition of doom. For wherever the lurid golden light of the planet Carcosa shines, the long wicked shadow of the King in Yellow is cast. Behind that mask lies echoes of decadence and disorder, masquerades of limitless cruelty, a hideous laughter in equal part. And all the poor devils seduced by the lavish promises of the God King's court, the favored victims of the King's sadistic amusement, are followers belonging to the other deities. Huh? What? Where? Huh? Sure is yellow around here. Did I zone out? I was... What was I doing? Damn. I'm having one hell of a brain fart. I can't remember for the life of me what I'm supposed to be doing. Everything feels so hazy. I feel like this does take place after the first story. Maybe she like stepped in right afterwards. Was I going to work? I'm standing outside after all. Yeah, it's gotta be it. The sun is setting, so it's probably around 7pm. Which means I'm gonna be crazy late. Fantastic. That's the beauty of working nights. I can't use the excuse that I overslept. Yeah, boss, I slept all day. Sun up to sundown, that's why I'm... Six hours early for my shift. Huh. Those sound like the church's noontime bells. It's high noon. No way. They must be doing some special evening service or something. I can clearly see that it's the golden hour right before sunset. I'll just have to ask someone for the time on my way to work. If it's not too late and I really hoof it, I'll just get chewed out instead of fired. I'll still have to deal with being sweaty, but I'll figure that out when I get there. Oh, someone's coming home. Perfect. Fingers cross I'm not absolutely screwed. Um. Hey man, sorry to bother you. You wouldn't happen to have the time on you, would you? Time to die. Hello. Hey, uh, hey. Is this guy ignoring me? Normally I say whatever and walk away, but he's unfortunately standing in the only stairway off his floor. The only way to exit this conversation is to shove past him. This guy is giving me such weird vibes. I don't want to go anywhere near him. The longer I look at him, this guy seems more and more suspicious. That odd posture. He's slowly swaying in an uncanny, disturbing way. The collar of his shirt looks filthy, stained with splotches of deep browns and reds. Is he bleeding? Does he even live here? This is the top floor and I thought I've been all my neighbors. There are only four apartments up here. My only choices are to go inside and call the police, or to walk past this freaky guy. I don't have the time to wait around for when the cops show up, so I'll... But just as I take a step, I kick something weighty with my shoe. It's bright pink with gold accents. A book, what's... Lynetta! But I died! The world ended! The shock freezes me in place. Because I was so distracted. So I guess the canon ending is when you get killed, actually. Not when you, like, break up with her. I didn't know- I duck inside my room. Slamming the door in the suspicious man's face. Fumbling with the locks in a panic, I manage to turn a deadbolt. I take a few fearful steps back into the room, clutching the book to my beating chest. I died. I definitely died when I performed the final ritual. So why am I still here? Where is here? Locked in my room. I have nowhere to run. Lynetta! Lynetta! If Lynetta was here, she could explain this. I like how there's two statues now. Maybe there's something in this book that can save me. I need to hurry. Come on, Lynetta, where are you? Lynetta, huh? Who is this Lynetta you're trying to call? Missy! 
What are you doing in my room? Nice. I just so happened to overhear you saying, Lynetta, where are you? You sounded like you were in trouble, so I let myself in. How did you even get in here? Your window was open. Hmm, true. Huh? No, it's not. In every way, I'm on the top floor, so how did you... Lynetta sounds like a girl's name, right? This Lynetta is obviously the girl you stood me up for, isn't she? What is her deal? I knew she'd be pissed I slammed that door in her face, but not so much that she wouldn't notice any of the things obviously wrong here. Why doesn't she care about those freaky things stalking me outside? Or that my room is full of evil idols and ritualistic tokens? I can explain. All this stuff... Let me guess. Accursed devices used to channel eldritch magics and do the bidding of outer gods. Well, yeah, uh, exactly right. Did you just randomly guess that? No, I've just been playing coy. I know exactly what you've been doing. You know what this is, don't you? Nice. It's a golden version of my book. The book I used to perform rituals for Lynetta. Hers look way more ornate than mine. Considering I added reality with mine, I can't imagine how dangerous hers must be. Wait a minute. The sky. That suspicious man outside. They all match Missy's book. Is she making all this happen? Oh god. When I expected her to do something crazy, I thought she was just going to show up with a hatchet or something. Missy, look, I'm sorry. I just got wrapped up in something. Please don't... Sorry? You're sorry? Why are you acting so afraid of me? <laughs> Could it be that you know what this book is capable of? Oh, ho, 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 ho. I know all too well. But I also know that these incantations take at least five seconds to pronounce, and that's if she gets it right on the first try. So worst case, I have five seconds to stop her. If I dash from ritual knife behind her, I might be able to kill her before she does something terrible to me, and then tell her it's nothing personal, kid. If I can distract her, I might be able to buy myself more time. Missy, look. I'll do whatever you want. Anything? I can be rather... demanding. Nice. Name your price. So bold. Nice. In that case, I have three commands. Number one, you'll address me as Your Highness from now on. So when I come home, it's Welcome home, Your Highness. When she comes home, she wants to move in. But that means... Whatever, it's not like I'm going to have to actually follow through on these. At least one of us is about to die. As you wish, Your Highness. What else? Number two. You'll quit your job so you can spend every waking moment catering to me. You're one and only. Sure, whatever. Just a little bit more, Tom, in spinning range of the knife. And number three. You'll obey every order and whim I have, absolutely, without question. Do you agree to my terms? Usually when you, like, answer yes to these things, these are, like, soul-binding contracts. Absolutely. Absolutely... what? Absolutely, Your Highness, I was gonna say. You forgot something. <laughs> I suppose if you will do whatever I ask, then there's no need to use any of these dreadful spells on you. As a matter of fact, I believe you can help me with them. Here. She just handed over a book without a second thought. Yellow energy pulses and crackles from my fingertips. She... Is she not here to hurt me? Oh, confused. I've liked you for a long time. And you're a capable bookkeeper. Handsome to boot. There's no reason we can't simply work together. After all... A relationship based on threats of violence and fear is no good, right? Right. We nearly escaped of our lives just now. But something is bothering me. How does she remember that I stood her up in the reality that ended up in Lynetta's awakening? And how did she get in through my window? I doubt she was able to climb several stories dressed like that, and then pass through my locked window without breaking it. There's only one possible answer. All right, your highness. I'm ready to enter my lifetime of servitude to you. I just have one small request first. Being? Could you tell me what this is? Huh? Your Worcestershire sauce? What about it? So, you're an eldritch god disguised as a human. What? How did 
did you figure that out so suddenly? Because no one can pronounce that word. Worcestershire sauce. Isn't it obvious? No human being can pronounce Worcestershire. Worcestershire. Of course not. It's an eldritch alone word. Why else would it be spelled like that? <sighs> I was careless. After all this time, I wasted trying to seduce you in this slovenly form. Yeah, you should have tried using your eldritch form instead. Would have fallen in love immediately. What? What? You think cosmic entities are attractive? As a human? Ye. Yeah. Freaky women are fine. But fourth dimensional girls who have non <laughs> Usilidian geometry are smoking hot. They've got curves I can literally get lost in. To my cosmic godhood, I would have just led with that. Oh, ho, 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 ho. <clears throat> Allow me to properly introduce myself. I am Esther, King in Yellow, heiress to Carcosa. Charmed, I'm sure. She's gorgeous. Bonafide Eldritch King in my room. Oh man, all my fantasies of smooching and Eldritch horror are coming true. And I'll just royalty the boot. The king in yellow. Sounds familiar. I can't remember why. My memory of other existence is kind of fuzzy. What I do remember is that her followers tend to be incredibly violent towards cultists loyal to other gods. Like Lenina. Shit, I kind of got swept up in the moment and almost forgot I already pledged fealty to a different god. This reality or not. Oh wait, I'm sorry. I'm already involved with another god. I'm following Lenina. So faithful and devoted. That's why I want you to be my follower instead. Is this like saga gonna end with like a freeway war? In exchange for serving me, I shall grant you anything you desire. Wealth, power, whatever that rotten witch Lynetta offered you, I can double it. Quadruple it. Times five. She promised me a smooch. And I shall... Nice. You handed over your reality to her? For a singular smooch? Are you mad? You heard me. So you'll match her offer then. I... I s suppose... If that's all you're selling the world for, then a smooch... Can be... Uh, arranged? No way. You promised to double it. That's two smooches. Times five. Two of them. One on the lips. All right, all right. Very well. Two smooches lip to lips. Satisfied? I just... I mean, you were coming to my host club. I'm not sure why you're so embarrassed. Usually, my followers ask for inordinate wealth, unquestionable fame and influence, or some lavish indulgence. Nobody's ever dared to ask to kiss me before, so... She's blushing for real. You really want to smooch me? Well, <clears throat> your terms are amenable. Suffice it to say, I'll expect you to perform your scenes flawlessly in exchange. Scenes? The prompt book I gave you contains the script for the king in yellow. Huh? You mean the spell book that I was so afraid of? It's just a damn play? This thing is just a playbook. Where are all the power-invoking rituals? Rituals? Is this some sort of peasant joke that I'm too rich to understand? Ho 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 ho! No, we aren't barbaric swamp folk casting hocus pocus in a cave. We have a little class. To invoke my power, my play must be performed. Perfectly. Perfectly. I don't always get these rituals, I, I mean, scenes right the first time. What happens if I botch my lines or set a scene wrong? Your performance will receive a scathing review in the Carcosan Times publication. And you'll also be killed. The latter is, I guess, kind of bad. But getting a bad review is kind of worse. One ends your life, but the other ends your reputation. I'm getting those smooches no matter what. Break a leg, dearest. Don't need no legs where I'm going. Oh man, you're in the sun. 
Are you a... Uh... Okay, you people aren't still out here. I was just curious. Just curious. Hey, look, we got a smooch on our head. Well, let's do some talking. Where'd you go? Oh, interesting. Hey, Esther. Don't do that. Do what? What? All I did was say hello. Don't speak my name, dearest. There's a reason I am she who is not to be named. A mortal saying Esther summons me to them. If I can't say your name, what am I supposed to call you? You have many options. You may call me your majesty, your grace, my king. My wife. <laughs> you could even call me your royal highness if you're feeling particularly subservient. Esther, Esther, Esther. Stop that! What is it now? I was just thinking, you know how saying your name summons you? Yes, what of it? There's an old myth that saying Bloody Mary in the mirror three times at midnight summons an angry demon to your room. Really? I've never heard of such a ritual. Does it work? It's some of my neighbor telling me to shut the hell up and go to bed. So, sort of. <sighs> More questions, dearest? You read my mind. I was just wondering. What do you mean? Well, you can only be wherever light is. Does that make you a bunch of light particles or something? Not just any light. Specifically, the light of planet star Carcosa, which moves and shines to my will. If Carcosa was destroyed, I would cease to be. The same would happen if the light went out or was permanently blocked. That's gonna be involved in defeating you, isn't it? So in a way, I am the bewitching goddess you see before you, the planet Carcosa and its light. So that makes you a person, place, and thing? I suppose, yes. Well, I know what I'm picking next time I play 20 questions. Well... Let's see. Act 1. Invitation. Well, let me kind of like just browse for the book. Oh my god. Uh, how many plays are we doing? Oh, we're doing the whole play. Setting. Exterior. In view of the city. Host. Click and drag the first word of this line slowly. Do I need to wear the stuff or no? I suppose I don't. So exterior is the setting. Let's see. Click and drag the first one line slowly. Ah. Greeting stranger, fortune fellow, tis a party for which I below. I invite the king in yellow, so come all ye in neutral. We'll find mass upon you to my masquerade until he may come close to Yafsito. Hope for us or may be still. Shadows lengthen dim streets darken, to the curfew thou must hearken, why so loudly does thou bark in the dim city of Yatil? Okay, so I had... correct. Only much attention quite unwholesome you'll instill from the souls of poor Yatil, why attract so much ill will? Yes. Nice. Um, here we go. That is just what I must seek. See hidden somewhere amongst the meekly. Tis one invited I seek. He shall all my mistakes undo. Tis the king in yellow whose great wealth I shall accrue when his shadow passes through. Wealth will come to I... And you. Lo, your plans shall surely languish, and this whole town will know anguish for the king as whom they say which shall this city indeed smite. 
If he comes, you tell him you and I will know his might. I'll be lost within a night. Which reward is worth that price? Line. Line. Um, um, the. Uh, uh. Wearing this expensive clothing, pardon for my family's loathing. Lasting till I'm decomposing. All my friends who strife I've caused. Yes, preparing for this night. Their forgiveness is the cause. They shall all be proud because I had brought the king to us. I, I kind of like the gimmick of this chapter. I might just be biased. Yeah, you know I know I'll roll. Why, thank you. That was actually pretty fun. I haven't got to flex my acting chops since high school. But you are a host. That's a, a weird form of an actor. You're no stranger to the stage. I can tell. Yeah, I was a feeder kid. My school did Macbeth. A virtuoso of the bard, are we? If you've performed Shakespeare, then you must be an actor of sufficient ability to survive my play. No, I'm dead. Tell me, what role were you? The leading man, I presume. I probably played a corpse. I was tree number four. I... wasn't aware that was a role. It's not. You weren't even the leading tree? <laughs> Don't worry, I was actually Macbeth. I thought you said you were a tree. Acting. Oh, you are good. Well, hey, what's happening to you? Don't fret, dearest. Something is simply passing between my planet's light and your bedroom. A cloud, perhaps. You know the proverb, wherever the golden light of Carcosa shines, the shadow of the unspeakable one is cast? It's a literal rule. I can only be wherever the light of my planet star Carcosa shines. In other words, I can't reach you at night when you're not standing in natural light, or if anything obstructs your view of Carcosa. That seems like a pretty big weakness. That explains why Missy had a weird daytime curfew. She literally vanished when the sun sets. What is, I was about to say, like, it's like Cinderella. What a Cinderella-like curse. It also explains how she got in my room. The window may have been locked, but the curtains were open, allowing the light in. So she can't get into my room if I close my curtains. Aw, I was quite enjoying my time with you. I wanted to stay a little longer. Alas, parting is such sweet sorrow. It may be some time until your sky clears. Until then, I bid you adieu. Lenina might appear. <laughs> That's not... Smooch on the lips, hey. Well, looks like I have one hell of a choice to make. Lenina hasn't been summoned yet. And Esther is stuck outside for the moment. So I have a moment to collect my thoughts. Between Lenina and Esther, who do I want to smooch? Or maybe more accurately, who am I more afraid of? Do I stay with Lenetta, or do I follow Esther this time around? She is offering twice as many smooches after all. I need to make my choice. If I want to stay with Lenetta, then I should focus on casting spells from her book. If I want to smooch Esther, then I should open my window again when the clouds clear, and use Esther's book. And if I try going for both, well, walking down the middle of the road is bound to get me run over. Nah, let's do it! As long as they aren't both in the room at the same time, I should be safe, right? Oh man, what am I going to do? Either way, I need to talk to Lynetta. She might be an avatar of world-ending calamity, but she might be able to help me get my head straight. Speaking of my head, why does my forehead feel kind of sticky? So we got some of Lynetta again? Now where... where am I going to fish for... More chances to, like, summon Nyaruko, or whatever they're, they're going to be called. I'm a little curious what the name's going to be. Yeah, we're locked into the, uh... The calling is in order again. So, draw your curtains. Turn off the lamps and lights. Red fire candles. Ritual necklace. 
And then... Lindy na, after that, he'll be so the age to Lindy ngang. Darling, it's you! Hey, sup? Hey, Lanana! It's nice to see her, despite everything I've been through so far. Sure, she may have ended the reality I was from, but she never lied or deceived me in any way. She told me up front what would happen, and I did it willingly. That said, I'm really glad you're here, but... Can you tell me what happened to me, to that world we dated in? That reality fell to me. Nothing there exists anymore. Like a dream that ends. Nah, that makes sense. Just as I thought, only... Then why am I still here? Why did I survive when the rest of that reality did? Oh, darling, don't make me say it. It's embarrassing. You're still here because I'm... Dreaming? I'm still dreaming about you. Nice. Everything in existence is being dreamed about by at least one Eldritch God. So as long as you're on my mind, you'll exist somewhere. That's actually kind of sweet in a terrifying cosmic way. What would happen if every god stopped dreaming at the same time? What if you woke up all at once? Everything, including all of the gods, would cease to be. And that can just happen any time? Nah, don't worry! There's about 50 of us total, so the chances of all of us being awake at the same time are low. This series is gonna go on- there's gonna be 50 girls. This is just a start, there's gonna be like 50 of them, watch. And then like, they're all gonna wake up by the end. You're gonna be dating all of 50 of them. And it's like, well, I've doomed all of reality and existence, but you know, 50 Lovecraftian girls. Hey, that's a record. <sighs> There's only like 50 of you in all? She probably knows Esther very closely. Mm -hmm. Kind of a big family, huh? Family? Do you know Esther? Esther? Darling, I thought I told you not to mention other women while we're together. Especially not my sister. Sister. Ugh, I can't stand that prissy little boyfriend stealing. Don't, uh, have a great relationship with her. Absolutely not. We've been fighting over planets and followers for eons. It wouldn't be a stretch to call us nemeses. <laughs> Thanksgiving dinner must be awkward. <laughs> Darling, what's that on your forehead? Oh! What's, what, 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 what? It looks like a lipstick mark. That's not from another god. Is it, darling? No, that's from me. I, I kissed myself because I'm so sad and alone. Because if it is, well, you die here. No way. Did Esther leave a kiss mark on my face when she kissed me? I should have checked the mirror before I summoned Lynetta. It's, uh... It's what? Come on, man. Just bullshit it. Say something. It's ritual paint. Ritual paint? Yeah, it's one of the steps needed for your uh, rituals. Uh oh. Oh, really? Yeah. Which ritual? The I don't die ritual. Uh oh. It's. It's a s secret. I'm going to pretend that this lipstick mark came from a human girlfriend so that I can spare you. But from now on, if you contact another god, I swear I'll stop being so sweet. Okay? Okay. You wouldn't care if I had a human girlfriend? Of course not! Why would I care about that? When it's a race against other gods to amass as many followers as possible, expecting your followers to be celibate is a bad move. For Grammy Roxanne, it's actually a requirement that you start a big family, or you get excommunicated from her following. Grandma Roxanne. Oh, I'm sure you've heard of her. She's got the most followers out of any of us. She's the Black Goat of the Woods, or the Mother Goddess of Fertility. Uh, fertility goddess, you say? No funny ideas, mister. There's no telling what I'd do if you cheated on me with a family member. I, I would never think of it. Esther. Looks like the clouds haven't cleared yet. I won't be able to see her right now if I want to. For now, I should work through Lynetta's spells again. I'll drink hands, save my ass last time. I better cast that one in case I'm unable to talk again. She shall listen to myself. What the hell is wrong with me, man? Darling, what's this I found under your bed? Stuff? Oh, that's my Eldritch Encyclopedia. I haven't translated yet, but the trigrams are useful. Oh, you studied it extensively then. 
Uh, I sense I've made some sort of mistake. Oh, uh, I guess. Why? What's up? Darling, this is a dirty magazine. It's just got some tentacles. It's fine. What, really? I, I thought it was an anatomical guidebook. Big Slippery Shogoth Girlfriends Volume 3? I bet you can learn a lot of anatomy from this. Herve. I said I haven't translated yet. How was I supposed to know? This girl on the front isn't wearing anything. She's topless. Technically, that's a girl. It just looks like an amorphous mass of tentacles to me. Is this what you wish I looked like? I really truly don't, trust me. Look, Lenina, you're smoking hot. I can never have eyes for anyone else when I'm with you. You're my dream girl. Aww. Or telling me I'm Sheesh. your dream boy. You're going to make me blush. I seriously didn't know it was a dirty mag, honest. It's okay. I forgive you. That said, can I keep it? Not a chance. Damn. So anyway, what are we doing? I think I do the mouth one. For no robes or amulets. Ritual knife. Alright, let's do it. Google Yarag will use a snake and not. Yeah, it still as unnerving as I remember. There's more blood this time. In this reality, this is just my hand now. Forever. Ah, it's such a nice day outside. It's a little dry for my liking, but we could totally have a date date. Why don't you open your window? Let a little light in here? Uh, uh oh. Oh no. No, wait. But what? What is it? Uh, you sure you want to do that? What do you mean? I mean, uh, don't you want to shower first before you go out like last time? Huh? Why would you suggest that? Uh, I think uh, I'm a pervert. Oh no, don't tell me. Do I still smell like the ocean? Do you smell like the ocean? Just a tad salty. Heavens below. I'm so sorry, darling. I'll be right back. No peeking but I love you. That was a close one. If she opened that window, Esther would have a cane. I would have been a goner. Looks like the clouds have cleared. And Lynetta's out of the room. If I want to date Esther, it's go time. Otherwise, I want to stay with Lynetta. I need to make absolutely sure that window never opens, ever. It's time to choose. From this point on, my actions will have consequences. That's, that's pretty cool. So for her, we have to do metamorphosis. Performing the ritual after Esther's masquerade will have consequences. If you see or hear something strange, it is not your imagination. Be ready. Proceed in total darkness, no lights, no candles. Make sure their images appear in no way. Ceremonial robe, wear a mask, a headpiece. Ceremonial knife. And then hers is gonna be... The masquerade. I don't see anything about the third god yet. Well, let's go down Esther's route first. Back makeup guide, backstage in an enclosed room with a mirror, prepare the host for scene two by doing the following. Apply the masquerade mask to host's face. Adorn the host in elegant robes. I already have a ritual knife. And I have robes now. When all is complete, look in the mirror to ensure the costume is prepared properly. Oh yeah, hey Esther. So, Lynetta is your sister. Half sister. One of our parents is the same. Though we have the same grandparents, so cousins is also technically accurate. Wait, your grandparents are the same. So both yours and Lynetta's parents are related to each other by blood. I suppose so. Why? You're inbred. Purebred! The term is purebred, dearest. After all, there's only about 50 of us total. Not unlike a pantheon of gods. In Greek mythology, Zeus and Hera, husband and wife, were siblings. This kind of thing is only natural when godhood is involved. Whatever you want to say. 
Oh, I see. Makes sense. You would do well to remember that ethics, taboos, and social norms between gods are not like yours, hmm? Things aren't so white and black in the outer cosmos. They're more... pink and yellow. Okay. So I guess you just appear whenever I, like, I get all your dialogues for the moment. Well, let's check the mirror. Seems good. Alright, looks like everything is in place and I'm bleeding. I feel all gussied up. I mean, this outfit's pretty loud. But even so, the beauty of this whole ensemble is out of this world. But I'm just showering in here. Burn me with Esther in the other room. All I have to do is stand where the planet's light can reach me in. I already know what you're gonna say. Your Highness, Halo is more your color than mine. But I still look pretty good, right? You clean up well. I'm impressed. You'd be presentable before my royal court in that. It's a pretty snug fit. The mask almost was alive. Like it's molding to fit my face perfectly. Quite the opposite, dearest. Your face is molding to fit the mask. I feel a twist in the middle digging to my temples. It's stuck to my face somehow. Ow, 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 I, it really won't come off. <laughs> I may have failed to mention that we reenact the play with deadly accuracy. From this point on in the play, your character never removes his mask. So neither shall you. This surely shouldn't be a problem for someone who is planning to be my eternal servant. Correct? Nice. I can't even blink anymore. My eyelids are stretched to meet an indifferent metal of the eyes holes. The mask and your face have become one. Your every pore is now gilt and gold. This is... What? Do I have to wear this to work? When I see family. When I see Lenana. Wait a minute. Those strange people outside. They all had masks stuck to them too. Are they past followers became Esther's servants? Is that going to be my fate? Let's see, Act 2, Constellation. What if I check this one? Since there's consequences if I perform both. Um, what happens if I divide by zero? Well, let's just go all in on this one right now. And we'll, we'll see what happens later. Setting, interior, well lit. The, the candles banner. Host wearing robes and mask. Okay, let's do this. Welcome, company much cherished. May my loneliness thus perish to this evening we shall share, which would be wasted by myself. No attendants have arrived tonight, alas, besides thyself. But I'll be beside myself when the king reveals himself. Lay thine hands upon my bodice, for before you stands a goddess. Know this guest of Goldenrod is merely the first of the night. Let us drink to your great wealth and family and life, lasting till your afterlife. I'll be yours once he arrives. Um. Line! Yes, until my schemes may flourish, we shall haunt my empty fortress. Let us dance a whirling dervish while we feed our appetites. By the morrow we shall know if the king came tonight. Midnight marks the final chime. Until that comes, there is still time. May the graciously obeisant demonstrate a courtly patience. He declines no invitation he receives upon his court. All who live in doomed you till will know without report the king arrived by your escort. A prophecy of grim import. Yay. An immaculate performance, dearest. Bravissimo. There's only one more scene to reenact, and then this world will be mine. I probably should have asked before we got to the final act, but this play isn't a tragedy, right? No, it's not. 
The ending is actually quite hilarious. I'm sure you all have a great sense of humor. Oh, that's actually a huge belief. What happens? Your character is slain and all of his wishes come true in an unexpected way. In his ambitions of greed, influence, and fame, he dies penniless, alone, and infamous. Okay. Wait, my character dies. I'm going to die. I thought you said it was a comedy. Comedy it's is kind of funny. tragedy from far enough away, Tiris. It's true. Is she implying that she thinks my death would be funny? Probably would be. I get that she's an outer god, so human morals don't really apply to her. But that's gotta be cruel even for her. No way I can go through with that, sorry. I don't want to die again. I anticipated that you might get cold feet after learning of your character's fate. However, my wrath is terror far beyond a touch of stage fright. So, for your sake, dearest, do the f***ing scene. You can't do that! Elricots don't swear! Perform Banquet. Do not make a mistake or a hungry uninvited guest may arrive. Oh, see how it's blue? That's, um... Neko. Is Lana still in the bathroom? Like, you have not been noticing? God, you take long showers. Well, let's take a look here. Food preparation guide. Prepare for the scene three by doing the following. Retrieve ingredients from cold storage. Light red fire candles. Allow the king into the room. Don't make a mistake or hungry and vine vine guests may arrive. Black candles. Try it. <laughs> Secret. Do you not like save my other one when I got it? Well, it might be fine. Because I did see it on the menu. Okay, now we do it. Well, it looks like you were supposed to say simply exquisite. Yes, I believe this banquet will do nicely. The room is filled with the mouth-wandering aroma of perfectly seasoned meat and fresh fruit. There must be magical component involved here because I see no less than three of my favorite dishes. As they're straying towards my bed. Surely you don't intend to merely watch me eat, dearest. I didn't think she was going to let me have any. Don't mind if I do. The architect. What was that? Sound like groans and murderous anger from outside the door. It was that from the masked stalkers outside? If they've all got masks on their faces, they must be Esther's followers, or even ex partners. Then their groans were of jealousy. Makes sense. They've been locked outside all this time. I bet they killed for the chance of any to spend any time with Esther. Just a moment, dearest. What is the thread count of your silken sheets? At least 1,000, I presume. 1,001. Silk. My blankets are cotton. <sighs> Perhaps I'll just stand while you feed me instead. Yeah, you wouldn't want that poor to rub off of you. So picky. If she's that uppity, maybe I'll start with grapes. Something that'll feed her princess complex. Uh... Nice. <laughs> Delightful. I'm glad. Another. Hey, think I could have one of these? <laughs> Dream on. My lips have already touched it. If you want an indirect kiss, you'll have to be more clever than that. Oh yeah? She won't eat anything my lips have touched either. Of course not. You're eyeing this cream puff, right? Would you like me to feed you a bite? Oh, heavens below, yes. I am pleased by this new attitude of yours, dearest. You'll lick it? I casually take a bite out of the cream puff. You should know. All of Joe's summons end up being bully bait by the end. 
Mmm, this, this is so good. I've never had anything like it. Let me try. Oh, you want a bite? Even though my lips have touched it? I... I don't want it after all. Don't be sundry. Well, if you don't want it, then I guess I can have some now, Rand. Mmm, it's really delicious. Nothing tastes better than food with a twist of Eldritch magics. It's a shame you don't want any of it. It's almost like you're poor or something. What's it gonna be? Want to eat your favorite dessert or suffer an indirect kiss? What was that? I order you to hand over the cream puff. Very well, my king. I offer over the other half of the cream puff to her. Eat your hands, but instead... I forgot I was hand-feeding her. Her lips are insanely soft against my fingers. Mm, it really is delightful. She's damn cute when she drops her sadistic front. I do more, but I feel those hustering, jealous daggers in my back. I'll turn my head off if I let this go on. Shouldn't we save some of this for the play? It'll hurt the performance if we eat the entire set, won't it? I suppose. Very well. Let us resume the play. Aren't I just the host again? The format triple. Last verse kills the audience. Act 3 Eclipse. Setting interior. No light beside open window. Enters wearing robes and mask. I mean, we've been wearing that. Well, let's do this. Damn the night! And Morrow scornful. Wicked morning unremorseful. Why, tonight must be I be mournful for ambitions unfulfilled. After all my preparations, all the daylights I have killed, why is it us only still? Oh, why are my wishes unfulfilled? Oh, why so livid? It's your actions that permitted this result truly befitted to a hunger such as thine. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Your greed is grave and tomb and crypt in which you die. It's within your grease you fry. Dearest host, the end is nigh. Um, line. Wretched guest, you've come to mock me. For bemusement, thou wast hawking, and in so the town you stalked me to watch my schemes fall apart. Strip thy mask, apologize, then hastily depart. Leave thee just my broken heart. Leave naught else in the whole apart. I wear no mask, no witness, for it was thee who hast permit this golden guest to own the dimness of the city of Yatil. Go, for I'm the king in yellow whose long shadow's on Yatil, and whose shadow you're in still. Dark as death is now Yatil. I think I'm dying. Uh, line. Oops. Ugh. Draw thy blade from mine. Contusion. My life reaches its conclusion. Cruelty matched by your delusion that you truly are the king. Yes, you would have granted all my wishes. Not for forsaken me. If indeed you were the king, why would you have murdered me? But I've granted all your wishes, I'm afraid. I disagree. All alone you are with all of your remaining family. And as vision turns to darkness, you have claim to all you see. And you'll wear that mask and robe for the rest of all your life indeed. And the strong will fall to illness, haunt you till with Stillness and none left alive to witness my ascension to your till. 
head from the catacombs shall spill The cries of innocence laid still We heard from lady and from smithy And from throne to peasant mill Cries unprecedented in the history of your till Wails unlike they'll ever be again in dark your till That your invitations quill Brought the king to black your till Baga, I'm dead. I'm dying. Literally, I, I'm literally dying. I'm clapping, I'm dying. Thank you! Oh, thank you. <laughs> You're all too kind. Listen to that applause, dearest. The euphoria of a flawless recitation. After Lenina gets out of the bathroom, if I'm not dead yet, I'm sure dead. Innumerable voices make up the cacophony of cheering outside my door. Fanatical revelry, screams of terror and sadistic amusement, all amidst thunderous applause. The king has come. Smiles, dearest, smiles! Aren't you proud of yourself? Why? Why didn't you use a stage knife? I I I'm, I'm really bleeding out here. My blood streams from a gaping wound in my chest. My abdomen is unseamed. To ensure you stay in character, call it method acting, if you will. Well, your method acting's pretty bloody. Oh, with sweet sorrow, the curtain falls. And the show begins. The stage is now set for you to inscribe the yellow sign. Do this, and I will bestow upon you the smooch I promised. You mean the smooches you promised, plural. You said you'd give me two. Even now, that's really all you can think about? Your world is about to be enslaved by a horror from beyond the stars. You're dying from a stab wound. It's just a flesh wound. And you're worried about smooches? Don't try to run from this. You are... an interesting human. It is a pity that you'll soon cast away your individuality for me. The yellow sign. The yellow sign is only visible or drawable by those who have witnessed or performed the King in Yellow play. Being exposed to the yellow sign after witnessing or performing the play, the King in Yellow will cause a permanent irreversible obsession with the King, her court, and Carcosa. The insane obsession persists after death. If you're content to spend your life with the King, dim all lights, leaving your window open, and light black fire candles, this will allow otherworldly images to reveal themselves. Draw the shape below without the X. This will be interesting to do. I, I need to do a one where, like, I do this right after doing all the stuff with Esther. Behold, the yellow sign. Become my slave, my eternal captive audience. I am entropy. Disorder. Where things are built tall, I appear to knock them down. Monuments, nations, relationships. Some of these husks have wedding rings on their fingers. Dang it. I steal the hearts and minds of the rich or powerful to break them. And litter my court with them like gold dust. But why me of all people? I'm broke. Because I am the breeze of chaos that knocks down any tower that challenges the grandness of my court. Your relationship with my sister was one of those things. Before, I only pursued you because you have a great deal of cloud amongst the night-going crowd and shrewd wealthy types. You would have been an incredibly powerful servant who would have been able to draw in countless wayward souls that meet my standards. At least... Until that reality ended and you undid all of my hard work. All of my followers that I had stolen from Lynetta. Gone in an instant. And I had no choice but to abandon that reality. There's nothing left to destroy if nothing exists, you see. But in this reality, I've stolen away her most powerful asset. You. Just as I've stolen every member of my entourage. All the husks. 
They're bleeding from their chest into their elegant robes. Just like me. All these people. Why? Why? Because it's what I do. No, I mean, why are they still here? Aren't they kind of third willing our moment here? Kick them out. Huh? Such a defiant tone. Why aren't you under the effects of the yellow sign? I've been infected by anime. I'm immune to everything. Were you... unaffected? Did... did the spell fail? I don't feel any different. You're supposed to be obsessed with me! Oh, I already was since I first saw you. That's why your little spell didn't work. <laughs> you can try and resist it all you want, but one way or another, you're my eternal slave from now on. Are you proposing to me? I accept. No, dearest, I'm not talking about marriage. Too late. What I'm talking about is catering to my every whim, anticipating my every desire, and living solely to please me. Yeah, that just sounds like marriage. No! I'm talking about a servitude where you do nothing but kiss the ground I walk on and revere me for all of time! A servitude unlike anything on Earth, where you never so much as think of anyone else! No, we have it on Earth, and it's called marriage. It's different! No, it's the same. But you even got, like, elder god lawyers. Is not. Is too! How so? It means no freedom! Forever! You are only permitted to do as I say! Yep. And it means preparing every single one of my meals for me, whenever I so wish. Yep. Yeah, for sure. And it means never being allowed to quit your servitude. You'll never be free of me so long as you live. Until death to us part, even? Exactly. Yeah, okay, I'm sorry, but you're literally just describing being married. I mean, hey, if that's what you want, then I'm in. Let's get married. Boy, all these... All these little followers in the back are probably like, No! Dearest! You weren't bleeding from the eyes before, you're bleeding now. <laughs> Dang, we're smooth. Y you shouldn't! I... I... I stole you away. I ruined your relationship with Lynetta. I preferred you from the beginning. I already broke up with Lynetta and the other reality, actually. Why are you being so persistent? You can't really want to marry me that badly. Hmm, I guess all endings are canon then. You're just trying to act all smooth, so I give you your second smooch. Save it for our wedding day. Uh, it, you can't be serious, right? Wow, they actually... He was serious. The king and wife. Hey, this was actually a happy ending. So, checking the route, let's look at the branching here. So, the branching is at right here. And then we have red as a, um, that's probably just a generic bad end or something, you like goof up. Pink, I'm assuming, is the Lynetta route, because, well, it's pink colored. And then, looks like we have a branching in the endings. There's two other options here, which is interesting. Six endings in this route, actually. Wow. And it, it doesn't say here... Here's the difference. This is... This is two true endings. This is a bad ending. Worth it. See, it only says two. This is a firm six endings. So let's hunt them down. Someone with robe and necklace. I mean, we're already technically wearing a mask. Well, no. It's... Part of my face. So that's, that's kind of a little interesting detail. It, it kept it part of my, like... Is it that you represented? No. Okay. The necklace is, but not the, the Cthulhu mask. Ceremony knife. Chant. Hop, hop, begins the... Hop, and then we're going to ask for court. I, I... I can't get rich enough to stay over with my masquerade one. Well, you are Hello. Is everything all right? I'm here. She's finished with her shower. 
Oh, uh, yeah, I'm just working my pronunciation. She's right in front of me. If I bury my face in this book, she won't notice the mask is fused to my face. Oh, are you stuck on a word? I can help you sound it out. Let me see the page. Uh-oh. No, no, I got... Uh, I'm a... I'm a big boy! Really, and can't be hard to figure out over in English, haha. <laughs> it would probably be easier to read if the book wasn't upside down, darling. Oh, that explains why I couldn't read it. Ha <laughs> okay. Think of God now. Darling, why are you holding it so close to your face? The font shouldn't be that small. Uh, my eyesight has been going for a while now. I gotta pick up some prescription reading glasses, but I keep putting it off. <laughs> I didn't know you need glasses. I, uh, usually wear contacts. But... You aren't wearing them now? Oh, I guess not. I must have dropped them on the ground somewhere in the last reality. Ah. Darling! Yeah? Put the book down. Uh-oh. Now. Uh-oh. That's it. I'm screwed. If she sees this masquerade mask on my face, she'll know I've been meeting with Esther. Think, 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 think. <laughs> Did I just throw a book at you? I got like a purple heart. Quick, the bathroom! Will that door hold? No telling. If this mask is still in my face when she gets in. I know her option. I dig my fingers under the edge of the mask. It feels like I'm pulling on my very fingernails off for mere millimeters of leverage. The mask feels loose. My skin, I'm taking up large chunks of flesh at every pool. This pain, it's unreal. What's going on in there? Let me in. I'm just dying, don't worry. It's do or die. I take a deep breath and pull the mask forward. My skin is taut and there's no more give. Then I... I can't tell if this is part of the game or this is a bug. I, I, I can't even formulate thoughts right now. Whatever happens here happens. I don't know, I like this ending better now. I don't know. I know. I don't know. I don't know. I do I Okay. And I black out from the pain. Waking up sometime later in my bed. The gold mask was nowhere to be found. I'm alive. I think. And the voice has stopped. Oh god! I'm an abomination! What's going on here? Breakup. Embrace. Very spooky. Chant for you have to do to give a big ol' hug. We love you. That's a nice detail right there, actually. Don't worry about these steps. Lenina. Yes, darling? I'm just checking, but... You haven't tampered with my book, right? What do you mean? This Eldritch Embrace spell looks a bit different from the other rituals. <laughs> How strange! <laughs> oh, what's the use? You caught me. It's not a real ritual. I just... I see how hard you're pushing yourself to make it through these spells for my sake. I thought maybe you could use a break from the real rituals, so I could spoil you a little. Ah, oh, that's actually pretty sweet of you. But there's no time for breaks. Not even a quick one? I can't lose sight of my singular goal. I don't think I have, like, eyes anymore. Look like I just had a skull smooching you. Well, alright. I'll leave you to it, then. You're leaving. There's something I need to check on. It's probably nothing, but... Oh, no. 
You haven't seen anything strange lately, have you? I've seen plenty of strange things lately. Outer gods, hands with mouths. <laughs> I meant things beyond the usual strangeness. You haven't noticed anything watching you, have you? You mean Esther? <sighs> Sorry, I guess I'm being the strange one, huh? I'll just be right back. Stay safe, okay? Okay. Perform this ritual after Esther's banquet will have consequences. Let the room be well lit. For no ropes or necklaces to have offering your person. Can I? What happened if I put a yellow sign after? Oh my god. Is, is, does the game compensate for that? Is there never ending? Let the room be well lit. No ropes or necklaces. Um, I'm not sure if you're supposed to be there, or if that's just like a programming oversight. Offering on my person. The found singing on the little really awful. I'm using my supplies to cook for Esther. All that's left is love from our banquet. That's no good, darling. Uh oh. It's no good to leave dirty dishes out, especially after eating so much. You know, it's important to take your diet seriously. You should be more careful when your health is on the line. I'll remember that. This much food. It's surprising that you were able to eat it alone. Yeah, well, I, I know I don't look it, but I'm a big eater, especially with sweets. You're so interesting, darling. I'm learning something new about you every day. I can't tell if she's on to me or if she's in denial, but I sense I'm in trouble. It just can't be helped if you got a sweet tooth. Do you want me to feed you the last of it? Uh-oh. What, the leftovers? Uh, I'm good. It's no good to waste food, darling. No, you were right. I should watch my diet more carefully. If you've already eaten the poison, you may as well lick the plate, as they say. It doesn't work that way. I'm full. Make room in your dessert stomach. She's merciless. Say, ah. No. Huh? You don't want to eat? I wonder, if this isn't the food that you like, it sounds like you're saying this was for someone else. Oh no, this is delicious. Mmm, bones. But that can't be right. After all, my darling wouldn't secretly be hosting communion with other gods behind my back. No, I just ignore the Esther sprite that's still hanging out there. Right, darling? Those are dangerous eyes. I've got my back against the wall here. Even if she knows, I have to keep up appearances here, or she'll drag me to oblivion without a second thought. It wasn't me. I reluctantly unclenched my teeth and opened my mouth. A chew soaked morsel from leftovers is shoveled into my mouth. It wasn't me. It feels gritty, with an unusual texture, that gets covered in thousands of small hairs. It tastes strangely. I can't even begin to guess what food this used to be. I try to gulp it down before I can taste it, but it's too big to swallow whole. If I just bite it in half once and swallow the pieces, I might get it down before I gag. As I bite down, it bursts like a tomato, filling my mouth with a sweet juice. It tastes extremely fruity, sort of pineapple even. That is... That is good. It's better than good. It's great. It's godlike nectar, instantly addictive ambrosia. More, I need more. It's too delicious to have just one bite. It's seriously like nothing else. As soon as I swallow, I feel the immediate effects of withdrawal. My fond memories of any other food fade out or disgust. The mere thought of ever eating anything else makes my stomach churn. I greedily take another bite, filling my mouth with as much as I can. The smooth nectar bursting from every bite swims around my mouth, coating every surface. It's so delicious that it's making my mouth tingle. Huh? Did I just bite my cheek? Why do I taste blood? Reading ourselves. The dull tingling suddenly turns into a sharp sting, and then to an unbearable burning. My whole mouth feels raw, like I'm gargling acid. 
It's like my mouth is being adjusted. I lurch to spit it out, but my willpower fails me. I just can't bear to spit it out. It's too good. Just a little while longer. Let me too chew it just a little while longer. The food falls on my mouth with a splat. as a heap of bloody viscera. Is that my heart? It might be my imagination. But I swear I spit out twice as much as I put in my mouth. The horror. Good boy. You know how much I love to spoil you. Whew. Do you remember the last time we did this? When you couldn't speak back to me? I do remember. So, you know what happens next, right? What? One last ritual, and then we say goodbye again. As always, take as much time as you need. I'll wait as long as it takes, darling. <sighs> Who knew waking up could be so exhausting? Gonna take a nap before you, well, end everything? You know me so well. But don't try anything while I'm sleeping this time. I know what you did. Don't look so surprised. Right before our date would have ended, you betrayed me. Don't think that there aren't consequences between realities, darling. I've already dealt with that pesky breakup spell in your book, as I'm sure you've noticed. So just take the straight and narrow path of loyalty in front of you, and we can keep doing this forever and ever and ever. Hmm. Could you put the lights for me again, darling? Yeah. Final pledge. Let me close that. See you next time. So pretty much the ending variations, like I said, are they're probably coming from like how you combine the two, the two routes a bit. I mean, I have original knife. I just gotta go. Ow. Oh. Oof. Youch. Wait. What? The dad takes the book from my hands. We need to talk. Why? What is it? I... I wanted to apologize for being so nasty to you earlier. Truth is, even though I knew you were acting strangely, I was still clinging to you selfishly because I was so, so mad at you. I just wanted to have the best prom work for a happy future together. So I thought I could scare you straight. I'm bleeding. But now I know that's not possible. Not here, not now. You're just not the same person that ended reality for me so long ago. I technically am. So. Let's break up. Lenana, I'm sorry. Don't be. There's no need to end this reality just so we can have an unhealthy, failing relationship. So, I'll go back to sleep. Before billions die, for my sake. But where do we go from here? What's left after today? Tomorrow, silly. You're taking the book with you, too. I'm just giving it back to Moo. It's not like I'll have a need for it. Hopefully this book never finds its way back to your world. For your sake, and mine. I'll handle the book, but if you survive, could you throw out the rest of these summoning artifacts? It's no good to keep things that remind you of me, you know? I'm sorry. It's a beautiful day outside. You should open the window. Maybe let in some light. No! Take care. Okay, she's gone. Oh god, I'm dead. I've been... In zone. Yeah, because I was technically bleeding out from my chest and my face. Mmm. So that's a variation on her route. End zoned. So I see. I see all the routes working. So the middle, yeah, the middle is probably just a generic bad end. And then there's some gaps here. Because, um,. So we didn't max out her smooches. We we threw a book at her face. So you remember like the, the purple heart? Yeah. Okay. Oh, 
oh, that's where that what bad end is. It's still worth it. So it's kind of like, like yeah, you can get the bad end normally a lot of times, but it just marks every time like you've gone for the shower one, because it's always worth it. My mouth. So I decided to load back a bit. This is where you just go straight down the Lanetta's route without going down any of the esters. My mouth, I can't move it again, just like last time. Okay, calm down, focus. I control my hand then. <sighs> hey. You're learning to control your eldritch mouth so soon? I'm getting the hang of it. It seems I still have my muscle memory from the last time, uh, reality. Good. Oh, oh, try saying something in Rillian! You have a look at me. Yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty fluent now, right? Mm. What? Well, in Yavoldenid, vaulting would be a dangling participle error since you started the sentence with ya yeah instead of ya ya. Ah. And since you and I are intimate, you don't need the gen suffix. No need to be so formal with your girlfriend. Guess I still have a lot of learning to do. <laughs> yeah. How do you. Oh. Damn it, it's actually really difficult to speak English through my man. But lately it rolls off the tongue in comparison. And tongue, that is. How do you speak human? English is so well. Actually, most of us are hyperpolyglots. You can't get people to worship you if you can't communicate with them. Really? What else do you know? English, Mandarin, Spanish, French, Arabic, ASL, parcel tongue, Elvish, undercommon Swedish. Hey, you made some of those up. All languages are made up, darling. True. Delicious, just as perfect as last time. As long as we keep finding each other, we can keep doing this forever. Do you remember like the that. last time we did this? When you couldn't speak back to me? I do remember. So, you know what happens next, right? One last ritual, and then we say goodbye again. As always, take as much time as you need. I'll wait as long as it takes, darling. Who <sighs> oh, knew waking up could be so exhausting? Can I take a nap before you're, well, end everything? You know me so well. Well, let's, uh, do another ending here. Put a ritual knife on your person. you first uh what is it what if what if we didn't complete the final ritual what if i stayed to sleep longer so we could have a little more time together cool just you and me lingering in a doomed world alone like an endless dream come true nice doesn't that sound nice nice i kind of said that already it does sound nice ugly <laughs> Uh, this reality is doomed. You said it once. The dream has to end eventually. If you keep a dream going on forever, it has to become a nightmare eventually. Or worse, it becomes reality. Take a look at the world around us. Take a good look at me. Is this what you want our reality to be like? <laughs> of course not. My, not. my dream of being with you forever. Can never come true. But we can be together for a short time. Forever. But I'm not ready to say goodbye again. Why can't we just stay for good? Why can't our time together only be brief meetings and long farewells? What if we're saying goodbye forever? No worry. I can always reload the game. If I'm your dream guy, there's no way this is goodbye forever. It's no big deal. You can always dream of me again. I'll be right back. Darling! Darling. Thank you. 
for giving me a dream wonderful enough to remember clearly. This is actually kind of a sweet end in a weird way. A wake end too. My darling looks like this. Remember that when you dream to see him again. So let's perform masquerade after doing the um metamorphosis. Knife, robes, look in the mirror. The mask won't stay on my face, it just keeps slipping off. That metamorphosis spell must have made my face incompatible. Why aren't you in proper dress, dearest? Because I have no face anymore. Huh, just having pretty short jitters. Getting the mask on has tricky my hands, shaking so much. Jitters? Yeah, you know, <laughs> I know I look like a playboy, but I still get nervous in front of pretty girls like you. Dearest, you love your king, yeah? Yeah. And you would never lie to her, correct? Wouldn't dream of it. Then tell me, what happened to your face? I have no face. I try to avert my gaze, but her iron grasp holds my chin firmly in place. Her long, sharp nails dig into my cheek. What an unfortunate accident. And an even more unfortunate face. For now, we shall conceal that hideous visage of yours beneath the hood of your robe. Hopefully, this won't affect your performance. And in the interest of not having further... accidents, you will have my undivided attention from now on. You may express your gratitude to your king. Thank you, your highness. Oh, and dearest, one more thing. I may not be as barbaric as my sister, but I assure you I can be twice as dreadful. Do not give me cause to demonstrate. I wonder what's to go down now. Yellow sign. Become my slave, my eternal captive audience. So this ending we have one heart and one broken heart. Tell me, dearest. Because you took off your the mask. devotion to me faltered today, did it not? I cannot fathom how someone as common as my sister could have led you astray. Oh, alas, this is a problem of the past. As you are now the fully devoted servant that I see fit to invite to my court. All the husks. They're bleeding from their chest under their elegant robes. Just like me. All these people, why? Why? You're acting like you're staring at pure evil. I do not kill or maim humans personally. Nor do I cause the reality-ending maelstroms your ex-girlfriend does. I do this because it's what I live for. It's what I am. I am entropy. Disorder. Where things are built tall, I appear to knock them down. Monuments, nations, relationships. Some of these husks have wedding rings on their fingers. I steal the hearts and minds of the rich or powerful to break them, and litter my court with them like gold dust. But why me of all people? I'm broke. Because. I am the breeze of chaos that knocks down any tower that challenges the grandness of my court. Your relationship with my sister was one of those things. Before, I only pursued you because you have a great deal of cloud amongst the nightgoing crowd and shrewd wealthy types. You would have been an incredibly powerful servant who would have been able to draw in countless wayward souls that meet my standards. At least... Until that reality ended and you undid all of my hard work. All of my followers that I had stolen from Lynetta. Gone in an instant. And I had no choice but to abandon that reality. There's nothing left to destroy if nothing exists, you see. There's nothing left to destroy if nothing exists, you see. My thoughts are already becoming muddled. The dizzying Lord Glow of the Yellow Sun is sweeping me away. Soon, Lynetta will fade into obscurity. Less 
been a forgotten memory. She'll have never existed. Manena, who's that? The only other god I'd know of is Esther. For this, I am ever so grateful. How to show my appreciation, I wonder. For this, I am ever so close your eyes, dearest. This is kind of similar to the other ending. With Lynetta. Um, so basically, if I'm fully devoted to her, we override her mind control. And then we're in charge. We get married. But if I falter a little bit, then, you know, this goes down. I'm her slave. I already used up my supplies to cook for Lynetta. All that's left is leftovers from our dark communion. You must be kidding. You were seriously planning on serving this to me? Wait, I can explain. Please, do. I can't. I have nothing. Mere leftovers for a king? How humiliating! If you would serve your king leftovers, who, pray tell, did you find worthy of the feast? She's on to me. She's gonna figure out I served it to Lynetta. Your heavy chains dragging your by. Uh, I just got hungry. I skipped breakfast this morning, so... You ate an entire feast on your own because you were feeling peckish. So, the person you think deserves to eat before the king does is you? Such self-idolatry is a serious crime against me. God, king, and heiress to Carcosa. Conveniently, the punishment for blasphemy and treason is the same. Death. <sighs> what a shame. I thought you had some potential, but you're a totally worthless servant in the end. Oh god. She's serious. I'm just gonna die here. Wait, what What if I just mean to appease you? Then will my crime be forgiven? I am God King. All is as I say. If I wish for you to be pardoned, then it shall be so. I can give you some rare amiibos. I immediately drop into a full prostration blow. Please forgive me. Let me make things up to you. I beg you. <laughs> you look so pathetic like that. <laughs> Very well. You shall be... I am a lowly worm. Forgive me. Don't let me off without harsh punishment first. You... Don't you think you said that too willingly? Yeah, I was going to say. I think we're going a little bit in another realm. I'm just checking, but you're not enjoying this, right? Some people are into this. No, yes. Oh, you shameless pig! You're lower than... It was like she was looking at walking garbage. <laughs> this is what you were about to try to feed me, right? And this will be your trough, swine! Oh? You want a bite? Even though my lips have touched it? Open up! Drop a single morsel. I won't forgive you if you make a mess on my gown. A juice soaked morsel from the leftovers is shoveled into my mouth. It feels gritty, with an unusual texture like it's covered in thousands of small hairs. It tastes strangely. I can't begin to guess what food this used to be. I try to gulp it down before I can taste it, but it's too big to swallow whole. If I just bite it in half once and swallow the pieces, I might get down before I gag. As I bite down, it bursts like a tomato, filling my mouth with a sweet juice. It tastes extremely fruity, sort of pineapple even. That is... that is good. It's better than good, it's great! So this is a similar dialogue to uh, Lynetta's version of this. At least the end portion, anyway. It's godlike nectar, instantly addictive ambrosia. More, I need more. It's too delicious to have just one bite. It's seriously like nothing else. As soon as I swallow, I feel the immediate effects of withdrawal. My fond memories of any other food fade to utter disgust. The mere thought of ever eating anything else makes my stomach churn. I greedily take another bite, filling my mouth with as much as I can. The smooth nectar bursting from every bite swims around in my mouth, coating every surface. It's so delicious that it's making my mouth tingle. Huh? Did I just bite my cheek? Why do I taste blood? The dull tingling suddenly turns into a sharp sting, and then to an unbearable burning. 
My whole mouth feels raw, like I'm gargling acid. It's like my mouth is being digested. I lurch to spit it out, but my willpower fails me. I just can't bear to spit it out. It's too good. The food falls out of my mouth with a splat. It's a heap of bloody viscera. It might be in my imagination, but I swear I spat out twice as much as I put in my mouth. The horror. <sighs> Wipe away that sour expression, dearest. The next act is about to begin. And everyone will be watching. Okay, yeah, I think we're on the way to the worst ending. Behold, the yellow sign. Become my slave, my eternal captive audience. Okay, we have two broken hearts here this time. Oh, I presume you are wondering about those smooches, huh? Tell me, does a servant that betrays his master only to come crawling back to collect his reward deserve anything? <laughs> You'll get nothing from me. Well, I take everything from you. So, no smooch? None. Not even two? If I wasn't going to give you one, why would you think I'd give you two? Let's go for four. You know, I think I hate people that go back on their word even more than I love smooches. Hate? What's with that defiant tone? You're supposed to be under my control now. Say, you're the embodiment of the light from your planet, right? Why, yes, I am. So in a way, the planet Stark Arcosa is also you, right? Well, yes, but what could you possibly mean by asking that? It means I just figured out a way to get the smooches you promised me, even if it means taking this whole planet with me. Carcosa Gremlin to I'll use in case of emergency, only cast it once. In the event that stage lights fail mid-play, perform this ritual to bring Carcosa closer to your current location. Hey, you're only supposed to cast that once. Carcosa is close enough. Carcosa convinced me to the Majora's Mask. What are you doing casting that spell repeatedly like that? Going all skull can on things. That spell only brings Carcosa within a dangerous distance to the Earth. But why do something so pointless? If you keep casting it, Carcosa will move closer and closer to Earth. Don't tell me. Are you trying to smooch my planet itself? Yes. Row, row, fight the power. Carcosa, get this Heavens below. You're serious? Come now, we can be reasonable about this. No. If you crash Carcosa into the Earth, it'll be an extinction-level event for humanity. I am going to kiss a planet. I'll lose every member of my court that I worked so hard to steal from Lunetta. There's no need to do anything drastic. You'll die instantly. Dying once or twice is a small price to pay for smooches. Wait! Don't you like being with me? Think back to all the good times we had on our date. That was short. Uh... Kakosa Gafsasanat Fandaga is Ainan. You've been with a terrible end, haven't you? <laughs> it is a Majora's Mask! It even has a unique ending theme compared to the other ones. It's one small step for a man. One giant leap for me smooching a plant and dooming all of life. Now let me see something. Watch my face. What? Well, at least we're cleaning the lipstick. Phew, a good thing I watched my face. Playboy instinct jumping out here. If I never saw that lipstick smear on my forehead, I'd be in hot water right about now. Well, I still am in hot water now, actually. I've gotten involved with her sister. I messy the affair is bad enough, but with a family member, I'm toast if she finds out. Esther. Yes, that's a dialogue change on that. Maybe there's still a chance for us. In reality, far from this one. You're not gonna kill me? going to kill you. 
to spare you from the slow, agonizing end. I think this is like the mediocre ending. I'm sparing you the pain of being alive when the fog lifts and reality sets in. You won't have to live to see the consequences of the spells you've already completed. So this is very similar to the bad endings up to this point. At least this way, you won't feel a thing. Goodbye, brother. It was fun. It was. So we meet again. Hey, we got smooched. That was, yeah, Meet Again, End Zone, Awaken in, Redux, King in White, Enslavement, and Terrible End. Now, we still need to find the final secret to unlock the Cat Girl. Um, my guess it might be based on, like, maxing both their hearts to full. Whoa, that's hardcore. <laughs> Watch your face does some things to you, man. Darling, who? Uh oh. Dearest. Uh oh. Oh, <gasps> my sister! You did it. I did. Oh dear. Look at me, darling. What's going on? Everything. Well, obviously your darling has been playing us for fools. <laughs> I thought I had you wrapped around my finger. To think you broke your vow of fealty for this slovenly understudy. Esther, I knew you were a bedazzled, dime a dozen hussy that beds the first literate ass kisser that'll sit through your little skits, but I expected better from you, darling. Did you really think you were just going to date two outer gods at the same time and get away with it? Hold on, did you just call the king in yellow a skit? It is a composition of theatrical genius that a Philistine like you couldn't appreciate if you had another thousand years sleep to mull it over. But if my play is too cultured for your tragically unrefined sensibilities, perhaps you've heard the one about the watery tart who never gets a second date. <laughs> that one is true comedy. You uppity little... Hey, calm down, you two. There's nothing me to. I was about to say, see. I was literally about to say the same line. Like, there's plenty of me to go around. That's cliche. It's like here it is. There's nothing for me to go around. Can we all just smooch and make up? No, you died. Bad end. Blackfire reveals secrets. Anagya Yorkshire. That's it. That's all of them. All right, time to do the route that looks vaguely like Anka from Animal Crossing. Begin the dancing memes. Chapter 3, Neon Lapotep's Catastrophe. Fear of the unknown is the single strongest fear of mankind. Terrors from beyond the borders of knowledge. Uh, you're narrating my opening line. And yet, the truest horror has been in mankind's cradle since the beginning and walks the earth amongst us now. For true evil exists not in the devil unseen, but the devil seen and unrecognized. When you meet her, you realize that tucking away the rest of the horrors to the unseen corners of the stars is a blessing. A shade of a thousand manifestations, each more horrific than the last. She serves only one, 
whose chaotic and phantasmagorical wishes she obeys with extreme prejudice. But enough about me. Let's talk about you. Nice. Well, well, well. You're the one that Lynetta calls darling and that Esther calls dearest, aren't you? Ye. Yeah. Uh, wait, why my dog? This dread. It's like when I first met Lynetta. This time it's sustained, like a state of constantly being breathless. Nice sheets. The very air has become unfamiliar and alien to me. Saturated of infinite malevolence, it's impossible to breathe. The veil has been pierced and the outer cosmos has revealed its limitless cruelty in the form of this avatar of insidious implication. Its very presence assails my mind, turning it against itself and all that is decent. There at the terminal precipice, I learned. That terror not only haunts, it speaks. Speak up. I'm an older god, so I'm a little hard of hearing. Are you or are you not the human that has been dating my nieces? Normally I'd have an ounce of defiance in me, and I'd demand that she introduce herself first. But now I feel in my very bones. I'm being talked down to by something far beyond me. I, I... I am... Bark. Good. Would you like a cup of hot tea? A cold glass of water? You're offering me something to drink. You've been through a lot. I just wanted to ensure you're at ease for now. No, I just meant it's hard for you to be a guest in my room and offer me something. Are you certain this is your room? The very floor beneath my feet feels mercurial and unreliable. Shifting nightmarishly in non utility and vertigo. Who... who are you? Who am I? I am the obscure, the unutterable. I am the crying chaos. Yeah. When mankind pushes out into the unknown, I am the unknown that pushes back. Yeah. But, just like my troublesome nieces, you can just call me Auntie Nyan Nyan. Nyan Nyan. I are... Unlike with Lynetta or Esther, I can't overcome the unnerving presence overwhelmingly in my senses. I feel violently sick. <laughs> Never been visited by someone so high up in rank as me, have you? Silly question. There's only one that outranks me, and if you had met her, neither of us would still exist. I like your bells. Ominous vistas of terror open from every corner of my mind. I want to run. Shrieking and wailing, and alas, I've nowhere to go. My, my, you're still holding on, eh? I expected you to last long enough to chat, but it seems you're nearing your limit. Let me offer you some words of assurance. I'm the last outer god you'll ever have to see. What do you mean? I mean that things are about to return to abnormal. <laughs> Eldritch horrors will return to being obscure boogeymen that stalk unbeknownst to their prey. The veil shall be lowered again until the gate opens and mankind is eradicated. In other words, you'll never see me or my family ever again. But why? What do you want to split us up? Did you know that even amongst gods there are things that are strictly taboo? No. You see, whenever mankind starts exploring too far, too quickly, you accelerate the end of all things. So we appear to slow things back down. We scare you back to the safety of the familiar. We whisper evils and destructive mantras to the most dangerous of your kind to ensure progress slows. Because the longer you stay afraid, the longer you live. To put it simply, once mankind isn't afraid of us anymore, everything will come to an end. Humans are doomed to explore, and once mankind makes the last discovery, once mankind reaches the edge of the map, you'll fall off. So if there's one thing that is certain amidst this infinite cosmos, 
is that for all of time, our relationship is shepherd and livestock as we set the pace to the slaughterhouse. This is a lot of talking, Yan Yan. In that context, outer gods and humans being romantically involved is beyond taboo. It's upsetting the natural order and is a conflict of interest, to say the least. Now, all of this I can forgive because my troublesome nieces led you astray. You're just jealous and you want to join. I know you didn't mean to participate in such a grave taboo, right? I, I guess I didn't know. Good. Then we can work together to ensure it'll never happen again. You're familiar with these books, yes? I had one made for just this occasion. Do what needs to be done. Perform the Banish Moo ritual. What... what will it do? <laughs> Moo is the bookmaker, so it will prevent eldritch gods and humans from dating ever again. You monster. No more books can be made, and the entity responsible for bridging the gap between our realms will be destroyed. Our relationship will return to strictly business, in a manner of speaking. I don't want... Do not force me to remind you the grave seriousness of the situation. I promise you've never seen anything like what I can do. Big. Banish Moo. What? I am so, so sorry. She forced me to make this book. She said she'd spare me if I let you banish me instead. To destroy me, draw this simple enchant. Moo Sigarnishitua. Goodbye. I hope that love will be your black fire in the total darkness. It's a hint right there. You got a lot of pages here. Oh, nice planet. Blue hair. Well, I suppose let's talk to you. Well, what are you waiting for? Perform the ritual. I had a question first. What is it? How come you're so tall? The ever gods I met didn't have so much trouble standing in my bedroom. <laughs> I'm not always this tall. Sometimes I'm shorter, sometimes I'm taller. I have over a thousand forms. And this one is a two-story tall tech girl in high heels? Nice. Thirty-seven of my forms are... Nice. What exactly are you? Well, when it comes to the unknown, trying to explain something is a good way to ensure you'll never understand it. Huh? Let me make an example. How about love? Why don't you try to explain love to me? Oh, well, I, I guess it's like chemicals in my brain that tell me to instantly pass on my genes and smooch elder gods. Is that what it felt like to date my nieces? To smooch them? Some mere chemicals in your skull? So probably some magic and some fairies up there too. Hell no. Do you see now? The more you try to explain love on a technical level, the further you get from what it actually feels like. And the more you try to understand what I am, the less you'll know. Hey, I... You ask far too many questions. Sometimes things are best left unexplained. Heed this advice. Sometimes the unknown is best kept at arm's length. What do you mean? Do you know where time came from? How it started? Or why it only moves forward? Father time? Not the faintest clue. But you probably wouldn't have any trouble telling me what time it is, right? Even if you don't know what time actually is or where it came from. That's what I mean. Arms linked. Me and my family. Eh, that's all your dialogue. So I'm assuming one of the endings is going to be doing the ritual. The other one is to avoid it. We'll do the bad ending first. So 
You are as wise as you are lecherous. That is good. I expected you to be an insolent, uncompromising philanderer. You can imagine my disappointment to have found you actually quite agreeable. Oh, I usually am the first. Then all is settled. The bridge between our realms is severed for good. C can I just go home now? This may look like your room, but I promise that you've traveled a long way from home. Far enough so that you will find it quite impossible to return. Wait, hold on. I, I, I did the spell. I'm no danger to you anymore. I know that very well. You've just seen the precipice of the abyss and flinched. There's nothing left of you to be concerned with. However, that banishment ritual made it so neither you nor I can travel to the realm of man ever again. So, we're married? Just a precaution. Call me Thorough. You will stay here, where I can keep my eye on you, where any romantic escapades of yours will not endanger us all. But, but, but I... Rarely do I bother myself with the affairs of humans, but it was a smooch, wasn't it? The treasure for which you traded your life how many times? Curious. Then allow me... Nice. Is this sufficient? That's all you need to smooch me, right? Three hearts and a big glowing button. I am well versed in human courtship, but am curious as to what made my nieces bicker over you so incessantly. <laughs> now that you don't pose a threat. Now then, come to me, human. If you don't mind smooching an old cat like me. Now the the cat is fine too thing does actually apply as a reference. Oh god. Together forever. Okay. Black fire and toll darkness. So similar to how we did the secret before. Banish Nyan Nyan. You didn't think I was going to turn my back on you, did you? We can beat her together. There's still hope for love. Draw this symbol instead. Bring your ritual amulet chant. Yimungan Nellen Fultz Tip. Counter evil porosity. If holes appear in your hand, you've been cursed by porosity. It looks like this. The holes will multiply till you're no more. Where the mask is stand from the mirror. Chant until the holes are filled. A bunch of different spells here. Oh my god. Um, there is a lot of counter spells. I can see why we had so many pages. Well, let's just give it a go. My ritual amulet. You tap me Looking for this dog? Hey, bark. You may be capable of pulling a fast one on my nieces, but nothing escapes my gaze. I would hope so, you only got one eye. I think you'll find it quite impossible to cast that counter evil without this amulet. Now, my stray sheep. It's time I shepherd you back in line. See you into that. But first. <laughs> what? But perform the quick counter evil. Which one is this? Is that a plague of insects? No, no, my flesh is becoming porous. Where the mask is stand from a mirror. Chant to holes are full. The alpha could now finish the og. Take you the 
Maybe your mind is still on your side. Do you still trust it? We'll see who it sides with soon. What? Why is there a shadow me? There is no escape. Spooky. Not running the wall. Curious reflection. Excuse me, strange over the moon. Let me cut over in the mirror and wait. Human bedroom turn on all lights. Spirit away. If you turn invisible while you move, you're being spirit away. They're looking for you. They want to take you away. Don't bother hiding. Can you be alive by staying in room as well as possible? And perfectly still hold your breath. On his snuffed hope fades. Um, I think I'm dead. Yeah, I have died. What's that outside your window? Wait, no, I'm alive. No. No, I think that means you died. Yeah, I see my health. There is no escape. Yeah, we lost. Okay, let's do this. Horus going shaft three times. Do you believe your mind is still on your side? Do you still trust it? We'll see who it sides with soon. I've walked the earth while man was still rocking in its cradle. I know not only what scares you, but what terrified every single one of your ancestors. This one is... Well, you'll see it. It's... This one's, um... We just gotta wait out. Here's an eye-opener for you. Ghost. Boo. Was that too easy for you? We've only begun to lift the veil. Let's see how you handle the next one, dog. Bark. Uh. No such thing as instant sound. Sound is given ritual for times. Excuse me, Mumbai. Yeah, this is scary. those to be a challenge these next horrors won't be so easy to dispel what's that outside your window that's the door hurry right into the wall Open your door. Chant. 
this one. Very clever. But I'll have you know I've met many clever humans. None of them could outwit me in the end. Don't trust any weird words beside mine. If writing's begun to appear anywhere in your home, writing the walls after you, so there is no writing in your body. Don't touch a chalkboard, champ three times. Wash. Wash. Starting to have trouble. Are these horrors becoming too challenging for you to withstand? <laughs> oh, you can't begin to imagine the horrors I can show you. Nice. And soon you won't have to imagine. Nice. Be good for me now. Suffering is born. Uh. Oh, it's trying to stretch in glass. You see something strange running away from the mirror melee. Don't make it contact or touch the mirror in a way. Turn your bedroom, turn off all the lights. Reflections can't exist, there's no light. Yep. Come to Abti. Haven't surrendered yet, dog. I I'm impressed. You've got backbone for a human of your age. But I doubt your will to survive will last much longer. Your voice won't be heard again. A voice. Um not that one. You're able to speak a form you've been silent. Try to try to scream. Take reach out and go back from a mirror. Okay, that's one down. Get back on. One of these is like voices. Yep. You've survived all that. Just one human? One human that likes anime. In such a short time? Becoming... I can't believe it. You're no average human. But you still can't escape me. She must be running out of tricks by now. The ultimate wrath of the clawing chaos is upon you. Hold fast and prepare yourself, dog. I've lasted this long. I'm not stopping now. I'm not afraid, Bark. <laughs> then you lack imagination. Is it? There's no telling what will happen. She uses hex against you. Her true form reveals itself outside your home. There's nothing you can do to stop her. I'm sorry. What's that outside your window? Oh, it's all of them. Um, which one was this one? This. And then we gotta do the text None one. Of them out with me in the end. No text. Wash.
Wash. Okay. No lights. Come to add to. That one's gone. My flesh. Stop consuming my flesh. This one is... Darkness. Three times. One more. Your voice won't be heard again. The voice won. Ritual knife. This is going to be the voices. Yep. Turn lights on. Then camp out. Here's an eye opener for you. Just got way out for the ghost in this one. So I guess the final challenge is it's literally just all of them at once. At much like faster rate. Still standing? How? I'm just amazing. In fact, the longer this has been going on, you seemed more and more resolved. You're gonna spooch me without killing me. It's not possible. There's no emotion stronger than fear, and no fear more powerful than fear of the unknown. That's not true. Humans don't fear the unknown. Never have. If you think we do, you haven't been paying attention. Even sailors, the most superstitious humans ever walked the earth, said sail to the edge of the world they were sure was flat and inhabited by sea monsters. We've been inventors, explorers, astronauts. Hell, we take holiday to places we've never been for fun. You're not even stuttering anymore. Why aren't you cowering before me? Because you were wrong, Ati Nyan Nyan. There's one emotion stronger than fear. There's one feeling that every living thing knows. And it's way stronger than fear. Is it lust? It, it can't be. It's love. No, fool. It's lust. What? Ye. Yeah. You think the male praying mantis knows fear while he's getting some? Hell no. Uh, ridiculous. You're saying pure lust is keeping you from being scared of me? Heh. <laughs> Ever heard of the suspension bridge effect? They say when two people face danger together, they fall in love. Not when one of them is the danger. Nah, it makes it better. You, don't you understand the cruel indifference of the infinite cosmos? Your world, your reality, everything you know and love, it's all meaningless and could vanish in an instant. Even as we speak, your sun spins around the precipice of terminal oblivion. Idiot. 
The only thing that sun spins around is the earth and every human on it. I'm a walking anime cliche. And that's not all. There's more you don't realize, Park. You really think I'm meaningless because I'm human, right? You think I'm the lowest of a low, an insignificant speck not worth any attention. Yet here I am in your dream. <gasps> I've got that right, don't I, Auntie Nyan Nyan? If I'm here with you, it's because you're dreaming about me. It means I'm in your head just as much as you're in mine. I think the truth is that you're terrified of me, and you're into me. You're terrified of the speed at which I'm beating the unknown and playing a big wet one on it. I'm terrifying enough to have invaded your dreams after all, right? You come face to face with the greatest friend to your power. Nothing you can throw at him can stop him. And after all this, after being Lynetta, serving Esther's whims, and being subjected to the worst you have to offer, I gotta say, it was all pretty fun. Now tell me, does this sound like it's my nightmare? Or is this yours? It's my win, Auntie Nyan Nyan. No, it can't be. You, you think you can turn the tables on me? I already have. You're the second most powerful god and you fear me. It's only a matter of time before I date every single god you know. I'm telling you, going on to 50. I'm going to leap into the great unknown cosmos and smooch that, too. The dream. Smooching space itself. Starting with you. Pucker up, Auntie Nyan Nyan. You've earned it. Oh, no. Escaped from me. A human too lustful to fear anything. Could such a thing even exist? Nice. What horror. As soon as any of us dreams again, he undoubtedly will return to haunt our hearts once more. Oh, I'm never getting a good night's sleep with him on the loose. Auntie Nyan Nyan. No. Damn you, Rangers! Dream, dream, oh my god, it's a cover of that song. Dream, 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 Pinko mode. Dedicated my brilliant wife, Caroline Hunter, you make me a real sucker for love. It's kind of catchy. I know it's a cover, but in the context of this, it works. So I'm just going to show the endings from the first chapter in this video. It's just going to be poured over my first one, just so I can see like, oh, all endings are in this video. And after that, I'll have my usual post commentary. It's done. 
done. The last ritual. You did wonderfully. <laughs> I'm afraid it's time for the dream and our date to end. That look on your face. Darling, I had a wonderful date with you. And that's because of you. So why destroy me and all of reality? Why not just stay here with me? That's what you're thinking, right? Oh, my sweet mortal darling. I'm not doing this out of malice. You've had good dreams before, right? Well, when you woke up, you destroyed those dream worlds and everything in them. Did you wake up because you hated those dreams? No. It just couldn't be helped that you'd wake up eventually. Usually when we wake up from dreams, you don't consume everyone in tentacles. I love humans. And I'll miss you sorely. Please let your last thoughts be about that. Don't think I forgot about my promise to you. Look her up, my darling. You've earned it. Smooch. Awaken. And chant three times assertively. And then I'm thinking we gotta break up. We gotta see other people. Lenetta? Did it work? My face and hands are back to normal. Still a lot of blood over here though. Did I really do it? <gasps> Darling! Why? Why did you break our connection? I'm cut off from the rest of me! It's because I have other routes to go, sorry. How could you? Why did you? Why did you break my heart? I'm vaguely interested in the King in Yellow Joe-sama. And I believe uh, Nyari is a giant cat girl. I did what I had to do. Sorry, darling. Well, it's not ending today. I think we should see other people. But why? Was I not good enough? Did you have a bad time on our date? Is there... Is there another woman? Um, there's two, actually. No, none of that. It's pretty much just that you were going to end all reality. And? And nope, that's it. That's, that's the deal breaker. W what But you woke me up in the first place! Come on, we both know I got more than I bargained for. Darling, you realize I still have control here, right? If you want to smooch my real form, you have no choice but to do the spells over. Eh, a squid is fine too. Wait, what? That's a reference, by the way. Sucker for love. First date. So that's it for Sucker for Love. First date. So the ending is, seems to be obviously foreshadowing this might be a multi-part series. Because Nian Nian was scared of the fact that we exist and that we are going to seek out all 50 Pokemon uh, and kiss them. Now, will they literally have all 50? Hmm, that'd be a lot of games. You'd have to start, like, blowing through them real fast. You might have, like, a jump skip. Like, maybe it'll go to, like, 9 or something, or maybe even 12 of them, and then, like, it'll be, a, like, a time skip, and then we'll just be like, and then our brave hero smooched all 42 of them or something. So I wonder if that's where this series is going to go. Where we're going to go for all 50. But... Let's talk about the, the chapters. So chapter one, is once again, is a semi-remake of the original Sucker for Love. Proved art, some fluffing out of dialogue, and some, I think, some lines. Looks like a lot of lines have been re-recorded, if not all of them. Uh, it, it's probably the cutest route. It, it, it's more of a straightforward, kind of cute, conceptual route, just like the original. Uh, I like the second route quite a bit, the second chapter. 
I, I like the dynamic with the, the play with the King in Yellow and the kind of playoff between the two characters. I, I could kind of see where the, the development kind of was kind of coming in. And then I also like the third route. And the third route's the least romantic, obviously. It's, it's an antagonistic route. But that one is the, the horror chapter. It, it's There is actual a threat to our livelihood outside of us like messing up our relationships. And we have to kind of quickly... It's almost like an adventure game. We have to qu kind of quickly do things. Like a like a Freddy kind of situation where you're in a certain hub and you gotta like do certain things or you die within so much time if you feel these little checks. So I enjoyed... like As a little adventure gamey thing, I enjoyed that quite a bit. I also like Nyan Nyan. Uh, out of all the girls, they all have like their own kind of like benefits. I was, I was, at first I was like, am I gonna like the King of Yellow? But then the King of Yellow grew on me a lot. So, Kaflu is your classic. King of Yellow also has their own appeal. They're in a Joe Summer. Like I said, I like the theatrical aspect between us. But Nyan Nyan, you've got that, you, you've got the giant cat girl thing going. So it's kind of like, hmm. And I also like, kind of like the trope in some dating sims where your, your final boss or antagonist is like a secret route that you can unlock at the end. So I kind of got that vibe from that one. So maybe maybe Nyan Nyan's my favorite, I guess. People who like a certain character from Animal Crossing probably going to like go more towards Nyan Nyan. I'll say that. Uh, in eventual sequels, you know, maybe if this game, visual novel, whatever, does well enough and they're like, all right, let's continue and let's make more of these. Let's go for the entire 50. I would like to see the boss fight format done again, but not just for like the climax. Maybe like used a little more often. You saw like a small taste of that in Cthulhu's route where the tentacles are coming in for the window or something like that. So some more real like love crafting threats to your life, some more mini bosses and things like that. Uh, and then I would say maybe an expansion outside of your room. So we got the balcony, you got the room and they got the bathroom. Maybe we can go a little bit further than that. Uh, and have some actual dates to, like, other locations. And that would also free you up conceptually. I mean, if the engine allows it, it would free you up conceptually to have, like, mini-games and things outside of the adventure game format. So, we'll see. Anyway. So, thank you all for watching me play Sucker for Love First Date. I'll see you guys later, and take it easy.